Each year, over $6 billion worth of art and antiques are stolen, and much of it is used by organized crime to fund drug deals, arms sales, and terrorists. And tens of millions of dollars of reward money is waiting to be claimed. A stolen work of art is a stolen piece of our history. In March of 1990, Johannes Vermeer's concert was stolen from the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston. The Vermeer was part of a $300 million theft and considered the most valuable painting ever stolen. There's a $5 million reward. The Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam has the most extensive collection of his works. In December of 2002, Van Gogh's view of the sea and congregation leaving the Reformed Church were taken from the museum. The total value of the two works is $30 million. There's a $150,000 reward. Apparently, it's not that difficult to steal a work of art. The problem is, now that you have something famous and worth millions, how do you sell it? Craigslist? eBay? The internet has been useful to us because it allows us to see what's out there and identify stolen works of art when they come up on the internet because we have information on what's been stolen, we have images sometimes, certainly descriptions and titles. So if somebody tries to sell a stolen work of art on the internet, it is potentially identifiable and that is a good thing. There are elements of the internet also that are traceable so that you can see who has put up the information and trace it back to a source. Again, that's helpful. On the other hand, it allows people to sell things that are stolen quite easily because you can put something up on a list and you can be gone the next day. The building at 55 Gainsworth Street in Manhattan's Meatpacking District was owned by the family of Robert Romanoff. When Mr. Romanoff was out of town, a gang of crooks broke into his apartment by punching a hole in the wall in a hallway closet. They escaped with over $750,000 worth of art and jewelry, including 10 Warhols and two Lichtensteins. They also took the security camera videotape. Nice touch. The New York Police Department released images of the art, hoping that someone might help solve the crime. Ten of the works were by Andy Warhol, who is often described as the father of pop art. The pop art movement got started in London during the mid-50s and caught on in the United States about five years later. Pop artists would take familiar images from mass culture, advertising, product logos, labels, and comic book art and place them in new and unusual surroundings. Very often, the artist would use mechanical means to reproduce his work. I asked Susana Barcia of the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao, Spain, to show me some of Warhol's work. In my tours, I usually like starting here, Andy Warhol, because I think this is quite different. This is not the Andy Warhol we were used to. I mean, this is what he was doing in the 50s. He was a graphic designer and he was designing those shoes, you see. But from here, I personally, I can see his, the evolution he's going to have because I can see the glamour already and he's going to be obsessed with glamour. I can see the bright colors. I can imagine his assistant helping him to paint, to color, because he had what he called his coloring parties. And as he said, he wanted to be a sort of machine wanted to work in every media, cinema, photograph, painting, fashion, music, everything. He thought that everything could be art, and art could become common. When he died in 1987, he left behind a body of work worth billions of dollars. Two other works stolen at the same time were by Roy Lichtenstein. Born to a middle-class working family in New York City in 1923, Lichtenstein became one of the most well-known pop artists of the 20th century. Art was a hobby, 
not a part of his formal education, until he attended the Art Students League. He shifted the focus of his education and went on to get his undergraduate degree in fine arts at Ohio State University. In 1961, Leo Castelli, an influential gallery owner, started showing Lichtenstein's work alongside other pop artists like Warhol. His work explored pop art through the use of hard-edged compositions and tongue-in-cheek humor. Often his paintings looked like comic strips, which included the use of bende dots. He died in 1997. These days his works often sell in the tens of millions of dollars. Those are the types of things that change hands quickly and will end up in the hands of a dealer who will one day check it against the art loss register and they'll pop up uh, as a match. Since the beginning of the 20th century, the harbored Antibes on the French Riviera has been a playground for the rich and famous. For the last 50 years, it has been home to some of the world's most luxurious private yachts. In 1999, a Saudi billionaire brought his yacht into the harbor to be refurbished. The portrait of Dora Maar, who was Picasso's mistress, hung in the ship's main living room. Normally the picture was connected to a sophisticated alarm system, but because the walls of the room were about to be repainted, the contractor said the painting was in the way and it had to be removed. The plan was to put it in a bank vault, so the painting was taken down and locked temporarily in a different room. Unfortunately, it was more temporary than planned. The room didn't have an alarm system. Hey, nobody's perfect. A few days later, the owner's art expert came on board and the painting was missing. The video surveillance cameras on the docks had been out of action for three months. The police felt it was a theft to order for another private collector. This is a portrait by the British painter Lucien Freud of Francis Bacon, another British artist. The painting belonged to the Tate Gallery in London. The Tate lent it to the new National Gallery in Berlin. It was hanging on a special wall that had been built just for this exhibition and was therefore not linked to the museum's standard alarm system. In fact, it wasn't linked to any alarm system. In broad daylight, the thief walked into the museum, took the picture off the wall, and thanks to its small size, just walked out with it. It's worth about $2 million, and it hasn't been heard of since. One of the disappointing things in art theft is the low recovery rate. Only 14% of the works that are stolen are recovered within 25 years of the date of the original theft. If someone in the public knows of a stolen work of art, has seen something, then it would be good for them to get in touch with us. If they hear of a theft or somebody who's planning to steal something, again, that's the kind of information that it would be useful for us to know. Mm -hmm.